Welcome to Stream Theater. As you can see, I have uh, wiped the app so we can start off fresh. I will, this, your PC should show up here when you first connect to your Wi-Fi network. If it doesn't, uh, you might have to change your network. You can set up the IP manually with this, uh, or you can do that over the internet. So, but usually you should just get your PC showing up here and you can select it and it gives you a number 0774 for me. So I type that in on my actual PC keyboard and hit enter and my games show up. Sometimes you might get a screen that refreshes here. You can hit back and then connect again and it should fix that. So I can go ahead and show you a couple new features. So I made a new, really horribly modeled theater. It's supposed to be underwater. It needs a lot of work, but I am an inexperienced modeler. Let me defog my lenses a bit. Okay, so this is my Windows desktop. I could adjust the scale since my desktop's in 1080p right now. I can adjust the scale. That is, I don't care about that one right now. So that I have a 720p stream, but a 1080p desktop and the mouse moves one to one. I can set it back to normal and change the desktop resolution to 1080p. And then the mouse moves on one, and if I bring in the screen very close, oh, make it really big, you know, I actually get full 1080p resolution on a ridiculously huge screen that is a foot from my face, so I can fix that. Oh, now it's even closer. Oh, no, it's pretty far away. So now it's actually poking through the walls here a bit. <laughs> The interface disappears, but the actual screen doesn't because the screen is rendering at higher resolution. I can move it a little further away. But in this theater, you can actually move the screen wherever you want. So if you want to lay in bed but don't want to be in a void, hey, look, you can do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to some fun. So you might have noticed I had Vire.io Perception running. I'll go ahead and start with the Void Theater here. Starting portal. What's this? It is... 3D. Oh, let's see. Let's wait for it to start. There we go. Let's turn the music down. So... For Viro perception, it's usually going to be stretched, so you'll want to, th to click that three times. So now I actually have 3D Portal, and it's doing head tracking mouse. I'm going to turn that off just because I don't really want that right now. And I can turn on my control pad. Any minute now. Yeah, there it goes. Control pad works. So once I get into the game, I can adjust the screen. Very foggy lenses I have today. So the screen's pretty up close to my face here. I can move it further away if I want. Make it bigger, smaller, anything you want to do. So now this is actually in 3D. And there is another new feature. Thank, thank you, Gladys. <laughs> Here's another thing I can do. VR theater. So this will actually move the screen. So right now, you can see the screen is static on, in, in the world. As soon as I hit the back button, it will unlock the screen, and then it'll do mouse tracking. But I'm going to have to adjust things because I don't have my settings saved. Here you can see it actually moves the screen with a lag adjustment. So it's sort of like a long time warp for Wi-Fi. Uh, 24 is the default that seems to work really well on my network. You can turn it up or down. I'm going to adjust the scale up quite a bit to about 5. I've already turned the portals uh, mouse sensitivity all the way down as low as it will go because this will get you a little bit better accuracy. Good enough. And... Uh, when you move your head around, so I can adjust these high so it sends bigger mouse movements and then Portal scales them down. And I will adjust the screen to 3D. 
There, now I have 3D head tracking Wi-Fi VR. So you'll want to keep your thumb off the turning joystick, except for adjusting things. You might see it's the Wi-Fi network's trying to adjust here for starting of the stream. It was working a little better a minute ago. Uh, so you can use the thumbstick to adjust your vertical orientation if you need to, or you can just like look up and down. So if you went through a portal and you're looking the wrong way, so I'm actually looking forward here, I can look all the way up and then all the way down and centered again. So I can run around, I can shoot things. There we go, come on. Have to shoot in between the two uh, targets. And we have wireless VR. So it's not gonna be perfect. It might make you sick, stop playing immediately if it does. Uh, but it's fun to experiment with and latency just killed it right there. <laughs> and dry drop the cube. It really does usually perform better for me. I've actually played through about half of Portal like this and it's pretty comfortable for me. You can, you know, shake your head side to side and adjust the latency until the world doesn't really seem to wobble too much. Let's find out whatever works best for you. You can, oh, you know what's probably happening here? Am I still, oh, I am, I'm on, uh, there we go. Maybe that'll work better. And, there. Yeah, okay, much better. Well, okay, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so enough of that. And, whoops. Try again. And another thing we can do is change the seat in any theater that has seats. So you can actually sit closer to the home screen now. And adjust the settings, audio. There's also a trackpad mouse if you want to be able to uh, move your head independently of your mouse cursor if you're on a Windows desktop. Uh, the gaze mouse does work in any theater. In 3D games, it might be kind of interesting to be able to turn your head a little bit to adjust your play, but that'll probably make you sick. I don't really recommend that. It's just good for Windows desktops and menus in VR mode. And I need more stuff on the help screen. Tell me what should be there. And that should be about it. Thank you very much. Enjoy.